On today's show, I review this guy. Stay tuned. Hey, welcome to the first layer. We haven't met, my name is Richard. And on this show, we talk about 3D printing. We do, we interview people in the 3D printing community, as well as the making community. We do how to's and reviews, just like the one we're gonna to do today on the WANHOW Duplicator 6. Now the WANHOW Duplicator 6 is a nice machine, all in all. I will tell you that this machine is a copy of, I think, two machines. WANHOW is famous for, um, I won't say appropriating other designs, but they are famous for taking other people's designs and making them their own. Um, so this one looks very similar to the M200 by Zortrax, which I think it was meant to be like that. It's a very tough aluminum case. Um, it's got plexiglass top, sides, and front panel. I'm going to tell you today what I like about this unit and what I think they could improve with this unit going forward. And we'll also discuss the price and where you might be able to get one. So let's first talk about the origins of this machine. The origins of this machine are kind of a cross between an Ultimaker and a M200 by Zortrax. The reason I say Ultimaker is because if you look at the display down here on the front, I'm just going to quickly turn it on. If you look down at the display on the front, it's very similar to what you're going to get with an Ultimaker. It has that nice big dial, it has the display, and the display actually, funny enough, is almost identical to what the Ultimaker is. And then it's got your full-size SD card slot right there. Um, build volume on this guy is 200 by 200 by 175, and that's all done in millimeters. So 200 by 200 millimeter bed and a 175 millimeter build height. It is a single extruder only. Um, it is fully enclosed. These enclosures now, the sidewalls, the front door, um, and the top pieces all come now standard with the unit. Uh, older units, they didn't come standard with. You had to order them, I think they were 50 or 60 bucks to get that add-on. Um, inside, it's all sealed. Uh, there's areas, of course, where the wires run through, which makes for uh, a collection of stuff down on the bottom. If we go over here, you can see a, a better view of that. It's got, it comes with two mats, which are just like this. These are basically um, Biltac mats for all intent and purposes. Um, if you're not familiar with Biltac, it is a build surface where you don't need any additional uh, adhesives such as, um, <clears throat> pardon me, you don't need any additional adhesives such as glue, hairspray, ABS juice, anything like that. Everything should stick to this bed just nicely if you've got your head set up right and your, your everything else set up. It's very easy to level this machine. It walks you through leveling um, through the display in the front, which is quite handy. It's got three screws underneath the build plate, as you can see here. You can see the front one, and then there's two in the back to allow you to adjust all of those different points on the bed. <clears throat> Excuse me, my voice today is just out of control. Um, once you've got the bed level, it's pretty easy to print with. It's not a noisy machine. Um, it comes with a spool holder on the back. The unit ships with a full spool of PLA, a 1 kg um, PLA uh, roll. Uh, I got brown. Do I like their PLA? Wanhaus branded PLA I think is not the greatest. Um, I've tried, I tried it at home. I didn't use it here, but I tried it at home and I wasn't overly impressed with it. I still prefer to use um, the spool3d.ca. Uh, filaments and while we're on that topic speaking of spool 3d spool 3d print it right 
with Spool 3D. They've got everything from printers to accessories to off-brand parts and filaments. Of course, all, all kinds of filaments. They specialize uh, in their own house brand filament, which covers a wide range, everything from PLA right through to TPUs, nylons, and some of the more exotics. Um, we also, or they also carry, I should say, uh, filaments from Spool 3D and from Zortrax. So print it right, print it with Spool3D.ca. So getting back to the unit, um, it's quite heavy. It comes with little rubber pieces to go on the bottom. One of the things I did yesterday was I printed some feet, uh, and you can see me pointing them out right here at the bottom. I printed some feet to help keep it up off the table and give it a little bit more space to uh, get some airflow underneath. Now the bottom is fully enclosed. Um, so that, that is a, a benefit, so you can't get anything under there and so on and so forth and cause any shorts. Um, comes with a, a, a USB port on the back, uh, plug in, um, the wires are routed quite nicely. Uh, they go through the top and then of course into the extruder, which you see right here. This is a Core XY machine, so basically what that is is that your X and your Y are all done up in this area here. So down, right around the top area here, it runs on a set of rails that goes back and forth in, a, in an X and Y uh, positioning. Now your bed runs on the Z. So instead of a traditional Cartesian machine where the Y is operating the bed back and forth and your X is uh, right to left and your Z is up and down, um, you don't get some of the traditional problems that you have with a Cartesian machine in a Core XY. So ringing um, that you would get or ghosting, some people call it. Um, you won't see that uh, so much on a Core XY because the bed is lowering as it's building up. And you've only really got one axis or two axis that the head is is actually building your your uh, model on. Now, some of the accessories that this comes with, it comes with its own SD card, um, which has some things on it, so make sure that you look at it. It comes with a full color manual um, and tells you everything that you need to, need to know from unpacking it to um, putting it all together. It tells you all the accessories that it comes with. Um, comes with its own spatula, which is very handy. I thought that was, more and more companies are actually doing this and I thought that's a really good idea to include a spatula because nine times out of ten we never know what type of spatula to use. I know when I got my first printer um, I really didn't know what to use to take it off the bill plate. I knew that you used a scraper and all the scrapers I had were much thicker metal than this one is. Um, so this one's fairly thin so you can get up underneath that that uh, print and pop it off the bill plate. Um, comes with a card reader, so if you don't have a card reader built into your computer, um, you can certainly uh, use the card reader, plug it into USB. Comes with a pair of tweezers for cleaning off excess uh, filament that's coming out of the nozzle. Comes with a USB cable. Uh, this is a nice thing that I really like, and if I can pick it up, this has come with both my WAN hubs now. Um, this is a tool that helps you to clean clogs out of your extruder. And what you would do is you'd make sure that all of your filament is out and heat up your extruder and then drop this inside to kind of push any excess material down through the nozzle. It's a great little tool and I wish more and more companies would include something like this. Now, just for transparency's sake, this is owned by me, um, so it's, uh, it's something that we, we invested into uh, here at uh, the First Layer and uh, Cleveland Media Group. And so my review on this machine, after using it for the last week, is it's a great machine. It really is uh, a tough little unit. Now, yes, Wanhaus famous for copying other people. Uh, we all know that, that's nothing new. But I think they, 
they did some great things with this particular printer and they had some missteps. Um, great things, I mean, it's got a decent build volume. It's got a, a Mark 11 head, same type of head that you'll find on, on uh, the M200 from Zortrax. Um, it has an enclosure on the top, which the Zortrax does not have. So there's an, uh, there's an added benefit. It's the same style set up for the extruder. You have a Bowden tube that comes up from your filament, which is on the back, and then goes down into the extruder. Um, the gears work well. I haven't had any slippage yet. Um, I have had a little bit of a tough time uh, getting prints off the bed, and that probably is due to me not adequately cleaning the bed properly. Um, so this morning when I took a print off, it was a little tough getting it off, but I did manage to get it off and not ruin the, uh, the build tack surface that's there. Do I recommend that you put glass on this? Absolutely. I would, uh, I would definitely recommend that everybody put glass uh, on their bed and uh, use glass instead of, of build tack. If you're, I mean, if you're into using build tack and you really like the product, um, then don't let me dissuade you from, from uh, continuing on with build tack or, or any of the other types of materials that are out there for you to, to get a hold of. Um, I personally, it's not my favorite. I, all my personal machines, I print on glass. I wanted to try printing on this surface um, because I felt that it was uh, better for the review. Um, I am going to put a piece of glass in this. Uh, so it will, uh, that will be my build surface and then I'll re-level the bed and that sort of thing. One of the things that I got to say I wasn't a big fan of is the way that the door uh, is done. There's no latch for the door. You can see that I can push that right in. I can get my finger inside there. That's how much space is there. Um, the door is fairly stiff when you open it. Uh, it's got a good aluminum handle on it. But they just missed putting a closure or a, or a clasp uh, of some sort uh, on here. And I think what I'm going to end up doing is just making a little piece to put on there. And then I will uh, uh, put a magnet in there so that it'll, it'll magnetically close. It's not a fully sealed unit. Um, much like the, the Ultimaker, it's not fully sealed. Um, so some air can get in there. I've printed ABS like crazy on this thing over the past week and every ABS print I've done has been successful. I've had no layer issues, I've had no curling issues, so that's definitely a plus for this machine. Now, is this machine for everybody? Not really, no. I'm going to say it's not. Um, is it good for a beginner if you have the money to invest in it? Sure, absolutely. Uh, because it's virtually no setup to it. Uh, is this something I would put into a business environment? Absolutely. If I was making up prototypes uh, for my business, this is a machine I would certainly look at. The Zortrax is a step up because of some of the other issues that it has. This does not have auto bed leveling. It does not have a removable plate, um, which the Zortrax does have. But for those two minor issues. Um, this still has a lot of room inside. I have big meat hooks and it's really tough for me sometimes to get my hands inside smaller machines to you know maneuver a scraper and get parts off. But this works out very very well. The rods all come pre-lubricated so you don't have to lubricate them. They do tell you in the manual how to uh, maintain the machine. You're going to add a little bit of of lubrication grease every once in a while um, which is very you know helpful um, you can change out the head it's fairly easy to change out the head if you want I don't think there's a need to comes with a 0.4 millimeter nozzle or 400 micron nozzle it says in the manual that this will print down to and I'm just gonna find it here real quick um, this will print in ultra high down to 20 microns. Um, 20 microns, that's pretty darn good. Um, that's a very long, slow print, but it's, I haven't tried that yet. I am gonna try it. 
Um, I've only really printed in the, their medium setting, which is 100 microns. For most other printers, 100 microns is their high setting. So I think with this, this type of extruder, um, you can get a little bit more out of it. I might be wrong about that. Um, most of my, actually all of my other machines either use an E3D genuine head or they're using an E3D clone uh, that has been upgraded with e genuine E3D parts. That being said, I think that this machine is well worth the purchase price. Um, Spool 3D carries this machine. Uh, right now, they've got it on for $1,099.95, I believe. Check out Spool, um, spool3d.ca to, to make sure. And yeah, I think it's right around, it's just a little over that, that $100 mark or $1,000 mark, I'm sorry. It's just a little over that $1,000 mark. Um, but it's, de it's definitely well worth it. It's very sturdy, robust machine. If you're looking at buying a machine, let me tell you to look at this machine if for, for your business, your home. Um, you're gonna get a lot of use out of it. You're gonna do a lot of good things with it. Uh, other drawbacks, I don't really have any. Other than, you know, I've used the Zortrax 200, M200, and I think that uh, this one could have used a removable build plate, but, you know, for all intent and purposes, it's real easy to get them off that, that build tack. So, till next time, this is, the, this is my look at the Wanhao Duplicator 6, the accessories that come with it, and is it a buy or not buy? This is definitely a buy. Something to seriously consider if you're considering 3D printing. Um, hey, thanks for watching today's episode. I want to remind you that we've got a contest going on right now. And what we're trying to achieve with this contest is to get to 250 subscribers. Now, how you can help us do that is by telling your friends about the show. If you're new to the show, click that subscribe button and hit the little bell down there and get notified when new episodes come available. We do new episodes every Wednesday that are uploaded to our YouTube channel. And what we're giving away as a prize to one lucky winner, we're going to draw that on one of our live streams as soon as we reach 250 subscribers, is you're going to receive a, a poster from Star Trek, uh, the J.J. Abrams reboot. This is a beautiful print. Um, it has some texture to it. It's done on a, on a heavy card stock, so it's suitable for framing. Um, we're also going to be giving you a Ray bobblehead from The Force Awakens. And finally, uh, but last but not least, we're going to give you a $50 gift certificate to spool3d.ca. Print it right spool3d.ca and we thank spool3d.ca for all of their help in allowing us to do this show for you and giving us this wonderful space and that's how they qualify as a sponsor now coming up next week we have our Halloween episode and if you were watching uh, our Facebook uh, yesterday I posted one of the pieces that you're going to see on our Halloween episode and uh, I'm gonna, not going to spoil it to you. I'm going to be at uh, Maker Fair Calgary, October 28th and 29th. So make sure that you check that out. And come down to uh, the Equa Plex at Spruce Meadows. And that is October 28th and 29th. I will be there doing interviews, running around the floor in my own booth. I'm going to bring Batman with me, and uh, we're probably going to bring a printer or two and a couple of other, other uh, pieces to show off and talk about. So until next time, have yourselves a great day.